Everybody, welcome to the Lore Reloaded, your favorite Lore Master of the day. Here, going to give it a quick second to check to see how the volume is. Press one if the volume's okay. Going to check on my own too. The Lore Reloaded, your sounds good. Might turn it up just a smidge, but uh, beyond that, should be good. Hold on, maybe just a little bit more. All right, so I uh, hope everybody's doing well. Hey, if you're watching this, don't forget to make, check me out at twitter.com forward slash lore reloaded this Saturday, November 3rd in the year of our Lord 2018. I will be doing a charity to raise money for kids running from 5 a.m. to um, 5 a.m. Saturday and Sunday. And I got a really special shirt coming out that I'm, I'm super excited about. Uh, to give you a hint, it has to do with the overt. So I'm, I'm really hyped about that. What's going on, old Firemaster? Hope you're doing really, really well. A good day today, sir. Of course, we got Tabletop Yu-Gi-Oh! Alexander de Berdegala. We got uh, Thomas Potts up in this his house. So we're going to be talking about a couple of things today. Uh, for the most for right now, I'm, we're going to start out with discussing Discovery. Uh, as well as my most recent video, which, you know, here's, here's the interesting piece. You never, let, let me level with you. If you want to see behind the, uh, what's going on, uh, most beautiful Jamie H, let me, uh, let me, uh, give you some behind the scenes. You never know how a video is going to go. You never know what the audience is going to like and what they're not going to like. Uh, you can tend to, um, oh, and on the Oberth shirt, every shirt bought, um, anything that would go to me is actually going to the, um, going to the charity, going to the children's church, so our children's hospital. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, so, uh, anytime you do a video, you never know what's going to happen, but there are certain things that you can, uh, glean from it and understand. Um, and, and guess how people are going to do. So when I did the most recent video, I figured it would be as popular as it was. I didn't think it would be as dramatic. I didn't think it'd be as, um, con, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, confrontational is a good word for it, but, uh, I didn't think it would be as dramatic as it was, if I'm being quite honest with you guys. Uh, a lot of people, and it reminded me of why I generally stay out of that and just stick to lore, because so many people were trying to take things out of context. They only really saw what they wanted to see. I mean, on both sides, um, they either, they either saw a lot of validation in it when I didn't really feel like I was validating all that much. And some, uh, saw it as an attack. What's going on Xavier gamer. Always nice to see you as well. Captain Jesse one controversial. That's right. Darth Nick, it's controversial. Uh, when I honestly, I didn't think it was controversial. I think it was pretty truthful. Uh, explaining all of the different eras, whether you agree with what an era should be or not, I think we can agree that generally it happened. Now, everybody has their own, well, Enterprise can be done with JJ verse or JJ verse is the same as Discovery. We can all have our own arbitrary points of view there. But when it came to why a lot of people didn't like it, uh, I felt like I was just being honest. Now, I threw in a, a Spoonie reference just because I like I like old Spoonie. New Spoonie is 
Uh, but, you know, I threw, um, I threw in a, uh, a reference here and there. Got Exploring Fate, given $2 for the charity. I will, I will donate. Now, I only get 70% of that, so I will donate the 70% I get towards the charity. Um, but here's the... Here's the sad fact about it is, you know, I, I do believe, I, I don't believe it's, it is fact, in my opinion, that uh, there was a, an attempt to lie, there was a, an attempt to lie and to deceive. Uh, people had grown up with the original uh, Trek, whether, whatever your original is, and had moved more towards... Um, uh, you know, the people who had and, and moved more towards saying, you know, this is prime timeline. This is what we had beforehand. Because J.J. Verse, uh, like anything, uh, had a, a rebellion against it. Because people said, this isn't track. This isn't what we grew up with. This isn't what we want. So they attempted to return to it. Uh, and, or at least they said they attempted to return to it. And they really didn't. It was more... A use of the JJ verse and lip service to nostalgia and so it was a betrayal it was in my opinion a lie uh, something they're continuing to perpetuate and it was in again just something that was oh unfortunate and like a lot of people have said uh, if you can accept it outside of you know prime like the discovery verse or whatnot I think you'll have a better time with it. I think it'll go a lot better. And of that, I, I actually do agree. Um, Discovery in its own timeline does isn't isn't bad. And I think we're gonna need to take it on all of of the all of the different series, Picard series, the animated series that's coming up, and Discovery is just within its own bubble, regardless of what they like to say. Uh, and you're just going to have to get past all of the personal bias. I'll tell you something else that irritates me. And by the way, if you guys want to talk about anything, we can. Um, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. It just perplexes me. The whole thing per perplexes me. Ghost World. Oh, boy. Incoming knee jerk. Mind hive. Discovery hate incoming. Shields up. Why would you think that they have reason to lie? I don't get his reasoning. What is their grand agenda? I don't know, Ghost World. Why do I think they would have reason to lie? Uh, an entire base, millions upon millions of people who want a return to old Trek, who want a return to the nostalgia of TNG and the original series or Deep Space Nine, all of which are who are 30 plus have stable jobs and would spend a lot of money to go back to what they were and they're attempting to sell memberships to CBS access things that make you go hmm one wonders one wonders indeed at least with the JJ verse said it was an alternate timeline I agree that's what I pointed out in my uh, original um, a point at least jj verse was honest about and i enjoy jj verse a lot more because i went into it not expecting it to be the old the track of old right i went into it expecting uh it to be uh something different and as something different i think it's really intriguing and very interesting i think that the proliferation of section 31 because of the events of what happened to the kelvin is actually interesting. I, I would love to see more on that. Because again, if you remember in section 31, even during DS9, he went out of his way to state, um, he went out of his way to state that, you know, it wasn't a building, it was a group of people. And it ultimately earned up, it ultimately turned out um, to be like cells and such. And so, in the new JJ verse, they are hiding in plain sight. And I, I think that's excellent. Ghost World, if that's the case, they would have just made it look like Prime. Absolutely not, Ghost World. Absolutely not, sweetheart. What they would here's what they did. They said it was Prime Timeline. They got the sweet, sweet cash they that they could from those who wanted it to be what it was, and they're attempting to now build and get that new um 
that new base of watchers. I don't understand why you think this is some kind of conspiracy or something crazy. All they did was lie to get the initial funding from those who were, and now they're building a new audience for it. It's, it's not, and so that's fine. Uh, I mean, you like it, Ghost World, that's obvious, and I would agree that your uh, comments are knee-jerk. Uh, I also hate the argument that young people would hate Nostalgia Track. I don't think anyone ever said that young people hate Nostalgia Track. Alexander, I was 10 when TNG, TNG premiered. I didn't come from a family of Trekkers. I found it on my own and loved it. I loved the hopefulness. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't... I, the one thing I would agree with, though, I, I don't think young people would hate Nostalgia Track, but I do think that you couldn't get the ratings uh, that you would want from uh, TNG. I don't think that's possible. I would agree that the changes that they've made uh, will get ratings versus what was the next generation or even early Deep Space Nine. I think it was a wrong move. I think you could have done and accomplished what they did uh, or I think you could have accomplished what they wanted and not gone that route. Um, uh, the, um, the, like Axanar, as an example, I think did it really well. Uh, Star Trek Continues. Axanar did a lot better in Star Trek Continues, in my opinion. I, I still think you could have done it. Uh, just to put it out there, no offense is made by any of this. Love your channel, but remember we can debate civilly and still respect each other. Well, Ghost World, I mean, you know, I, um... It's not a matter of me attempting to disrespect you. And I apologize if it came off that way. I just, I, I don't find the um, the argument compelling. I, I think, uh, I, I, like, as much as you find it to be a conspiracy, I find it to be crazy that, you, that people couldn't see that that is a planned uh, way. But again, yeah, as you said, we're all friends here. It's all having a conversation. Uh, I've seen at least bits of all of the Star Trek series except Discovery and have never been a real fan, but between all the bad things said about Discovery and the visual style change turned me off. Yeah, I mean, if you could get a free week from CBS Access, I'd say binge the season one, um, or at least watch the first couple of episodes. I would not endorse anyone purchasing it, though. Um, so... Was there a way to have cake and eat it too for computer for computer and discovery to look both toss and modern? Totally yes. Captain Jetson, what that's what I'm saying. This is what this is what I'm saying. Anyone who says that you can't have nostalgia trek, you can't have it toss and uh, uh, have it updated, has never seen Axanar. Axanar does an excellent job at updating everything. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't really, uh, understand how people could even say that. I mean, other series do the same thing. Star Wars does it excellent. Battlestar Galactica does it excellent. It's absolutely ludicrous to say they couldn't have updated it. Now, you could say that, well, we don't want it to look like 1960s. 1960s sucked. Even if you updated it, that could suck. Fair enough, but this, then we get into a conversation about continuity and lore and prime timeline. And if they're going to do it in prime timeline, then it needs to be consistent with the 1960s. If you don't want that, then put it post-Dominion War. It's a different conversation if you don't like the aesthetic. But the aesthetic can definitely be updated, and it's proven to do so by people who aren't even officially with uh, CBS or, or uh, Star Trek. Uh, Ghost World says, oh, no, no, that was more for me, just so we're still... Yeah, I mean, we're all having a conversation. Honestly, unless you get stupid crazy, I don't get too offended. 100% uh, agree about Axanar. Toss is so painful for me to watch because of how hooky it was in many ways. But Axanar fascinated me. Yeah, you know, again, this, this keeps um, going back. I, I don't necessarily disagree with what CBS did with Axanar. But I would have loved to seen them take Axanar to the next step. Uh, I, I would have loved to seen the Klingon War done the way Axanar had it. If they were going to continue to do it, uh, how the, docu the documentary looked like. Uh, I've heard that the script did not, did not do well. You know? Uh, but 
you know, I have my own opinions on a post-Dominion War show, especially if it was done by the Discovery writers. I'm not convinced I would have been too terribly on board with that. But the argument is, could it have been updated and still kept true to 1960s? The answer to that is yes. Uh, you know, the, um, the problem is, is that they didn't. And since they didn't, why even worry about Prime Timeline? The only reason to worry and continue to say Prime Timeline, if you're not going to keep it consistent, is to pull in the people who didn't like the jj -verse. <sighs> You know, I'll agree that I think it was actually a mistake to make it prequel. I still don't know why they were adamant about making it pre-toss. This goes back to my entire thing, though, Ghost World. This is what I'm saying. Everything here, you're going to yell conspiracy. Everything here is specific to, to getting the previous audience who grew up with the original series, who grew up with the next generation. And so you're, you're making it a prequel, which is back during the times people want to watch. You're saying it's prime timeline, which means that it is with continuity with what people have seen. And then you're saying, you know, we're going to respect the franchise and we're going to do all of this appropriately. That simply is not at all true and why would you say all of that unless you're trying to pull in that demographic now you get that demographic you get the um you get the money for that and then you build the new audience yeah everything oh boy the tinfoil hat is on yeah that's it you know everything i said is just absolutely ludicrous that is uh it is completely out of the realm of possibility that would happen i'm, I'm right there with you I, I have learned the era of my ways the error well, when it comes to Star Trek, they need to stop going back with the prequels and start going where no one has gone before, not where everyone has been. You know, um, I would say that it's prequeled out. That's probably why I, I would be surprised if, well, I would be surprised if Picard isn't post-Dominion War. Um, what's going on, Virginia? I would also be surprised if, uh, I wouldn't be surprised... Well, I would. I'd be a little bit surprised if the um, uh, animated series is uh, a prequel as well. That would very much uh, throw me off, to be honest. Lore Master, don't move. There's a Dominion Attack cat behind you. No, that's my editor. He does all the editing. They may have a time travel thing and erase the first season. <sighs> That would fix all of the issues, but the problem with that is that it's basically a giant reset button, and I think you'd piss off a lot of the new audience that you have, right? I think they're in a precarious position. I do, um, and I don't know how you get out of it. I don't know how I'd write. I don't know how I would write out of it, right? Uh, if you do a, a reset, you basically made the first season worthless. Everyone's going to complain about that, including, including, let's all be honest. If they did a reset and tried to put it back the way it was supposed to be, uh, the people who are judgmental of it now, who are upset, would get pissed off at that, right? Um, yeah, and that's right, Ghost World. The problem is, is that he'd be mad, and that's who they're trying to go for. The person who uh, will continue to give money and doesn't believe uh, that it is uh, the cash grab that it is uh, would be the person that they get mad. They don't want to make those people mad. Uh, what did Starfleet look like between 2160 and 2220? What did Starfleet look like? Um, I'd have to go back and take a look specifically at that era. I don't instantly know off the top of my mind. I mean, if if you gave me some clues, I could take a look. They're all trying to reset Karen. They are already trying to reset Canon. I, I don't know. I don't know that they are. By the way, Ghost World, I'm giving you a hard time. Don't get upset, man. I was just teasing you. No one's been to the Romulan, uh, the Romulan slash Earth War yet, except for one fan project that died along with Axonar. Did the Romulan project die? Oh, don't tell me that's true. Earth Romulan War. Um, the Romulan War, Indiegogo. Please tell me that. The Earth Romulan War looks like it's still going on. Unless something's happened that I didn't know about. Are you talking about this one? The, uh... The... 
mission overview this one right here oh don't tell me that one died i was looking forward to it. i was actually i need to call that guy me and him are going to um collaborate sometime soon daniel's hot topic hello laura what's going on i can't wait for star trek revolution i want to see a civil war and starfleet that would be cool i think uh the problem is that the 24th century pretty much explored the whole galaxy between all the series i can see that hey it may be a cash grab but i'd rather toss my money at something benign like say <laughs> hey it may be a cash grab but i'd rather toss my money at something benign like cbs and not money to something silly like a political campaign all right, let me let me say this. I will grant that a political campaign is um, absolutely, uh, in all almost all instances, worse than CBS. I will give you that. But CBS is beyond benign. They are the um, they are the absolute worst uh, when it comes to content creation. They have stifled free speech as. And fair use. I don't know if it's free speech, but fair use as much as can possibly be done. Uh, absolutely. Uh, tabletop Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, go ahead and refresh your screen because a lot of people are talking. Um, early Federation in the 22nd century is the only prequel I want to see. I think that uh, the Romulan War would be interesting to do. I don't know exactly how you go about doing it. Um, I would love to work on that or help them out to be honest but yeah i don't uh it doesn't look like it's been canceled man that would just be a total bummer i'd actually have to give that guy a call because to my understanding it's not canceled at all so um cbs is better than a political campaign almost all yes i i would say <sighs> but uh I, I, the only story that I think that could be told would be the Romulan War uh, and uh, and possibly uh, the Dominion War if they were to go into an exploration of how Starfleet has become militarized because it clearly has by the end of uh, Deep Space Nine and how they uh, would... Uh, uh, you know, how they move and which way they would go. Uh, my opinions on Paramount, we haven't seen Paramount really have an impact uh, in any recent time. Anytime they, I'll tell you, I, I don't mind Paramount, but it seems like they're as stingy as CBS uh, because they wouldn't let Deep Space Nine use the Sovereign. So I don't know how, be, how well they did it. And I tell you, this makes a lot of people mad. What's going on, David Norman and Remington Ball? Uh, I tell you, by the way, I would give, sorry, I'm going to say this, and then I'll get back to it. Uh, who would enjoy an Akira-based show in comparison to Discovery? I would give, I would, I would, I would give money every paycheck, every paycheck I, I made. I would give money to um, to keep that. I don't even if it was to CBS. I, I would pay them hundreds for that. I would love to see an Akira class. But uh, let me say this: a lot of people can get mad. A lot of people scoff. But the honest to God truth, uh, the company that has been the best when it has come to fair use, when it has come to using uh, their stuff, who don't care, uh, two companies, Warner Broadcasting and Disney. Uh, from a content creation, from uh, a using it and, and doing what I do, I would rather see it in the hands of Disney or Warner Brothers before I ever uh, want it to be in the hands of CBS. And Paramount, I'm on the fence. Uh, I know they, they kept the sovereign to themselves because they're stingy, so I don't know. Uh, not a big Trek fan, to be honest. I know Babylon 5 is a trillion times better. I like Babylon 5 all the way up to season the last season, which I think is the fifth season, I think. Uh, everything before that was good. Not a huge fan of the last season at all. Felt very, very much uh, compacted together. By the way, 42 people watching, only 19 thumbs up. What's up with that? Let's get the thumbs up, get the sharing, get everything going on. <sighs> the Acura class, yes. 
What's going on, Eternal Chronicler? You haven't missed much, good? Much, my man? That's a great idea. Post-Dominion War, they elect an... Uh, ah? See, England, you were trying to mess with me. You're trying to get me to say something. Bring it political. Not going to work today, sir. Not can not going to work. Good. I said good day, sir. Michael Lindsay talking about B5, I think. Slowed down, lost its purpose. Yeah, I think that they tried to clean. They tried to end it in Babylon uh, in the fourth season. And they did a good job of it, I think. And the fifth season, they tried to bring it back together and they just they lost it. You know, uh, times to thumb down, dude, thumbs down, do it. You won't do it. You scared. You too scared to do anything about it, but I don't know guys. I just think that I, I do think that it was, um, I think it was lying. I think it was deceptive. Um, and I think that it was unfortunate. Hey, Lore, have you done a battle breakdown of Babylon 5 Season 3? No, I haven't. I haven't done anything past the Earthman Bari War. I'm finally moving past that. Why do you consider on-screen only as canon creator content? You know that producers are effing lazy and mess it up. Canon is determined by the intellectual property owner. And the reason why it is important to have Alpha Canon, Beta Canon, things like that is to ensure that the world stays consistent. If you don't have a consistency, if you don't have a rule that keeps something in there, then you can throw anything you want onto it and talk about anything you want and just pick and choose. I don't want to do that. I want the channel to be as pure to what the vision is of the IP holder as it can be. Now that's Star Trek, that's Babylon 5, that's Mech Warrior. Uh, so canon can change based on the intellectual property. For instance, Babylon 5, uh, has uh, multiple books as well as the series and movies to go with. Um, uh, Andromeda, because of what happened with it, there are actual fan theories that are considered uh, canon by the IP holder, and so it, it keeps an internal discuss. It, it keeps an internal consistency that I have with the channel. That said, I am going to slowly start moving into beta canon as well. Uh, one of the things that always annoyed me with the bigger channels was they would throw anything they wanted in there and leave other stuff out, which is one of the reasons why I stick to Alpha Canon. Um, I think it makes the channel unique because there aren't many channels, to my knowledge, that do it the way I do it. Noble but pointless given how little care IP holders themselves. Well, I mean, you may disagree with it. It's what I do. Uh, what do you think of the Age of Discovery Star Trek Online expansion? I actually haven't played it. Um, I need to. I'll probably play it November 3rd uh, and give you my how I feel about it actually at that point. Uh, you know, Star Trek Online has always admitted that it's quote-unquote soft canon, so it's canon until it shows up on screen. I really like Star Trek Online. I really like what they do. I know people from... Uh, I know people from the GMs, from the managers, all the way up to actual people executives. Um, I, uh, I like the people there, but the more they put in it, the less I personally consider it Alpha Cannon. If you won the lottery and could buy the Star Trek IP, what would you do with it? Well, I'm not going to buy the Star Trek IP first, but if I did, I would probably try to find, um... I would go back to two shows. I wouldn't try to do four shows or anything like that and i would i would try to get back to the spirit of deep space nine though i would you know if if i could do it and keep make money um and keep it profitable i would have an entire team dedicated to lore uh for the series and i that team would work with each uh specific um series and so on set, you would have somebody who knew Trek back and forth, knew everything about it. And they would, they would be there on set. They would review uh, the, um, the, the uh, scripts and would go through everything. And the, the other thing about that is, as sure as hell, 
I would open it up. Let me, you can't steal Star Trek, and you can't do what Axnar did. But sure as hell, I can tell you, uh, any critic who wanted to just go at it and say whatever they want, the use of the content, I... I'll, I would do this. I would I would still have the content ID there, but as soon as you could see, uh, as soon as you could uh, see that it was being used under fair use, I would release it. Absolutely. And fan films, I would do similar to what Star Wars did. I would have a fan film festival for Star Trek. Make your best Star Trek. Now, you can't sell it. You can't create ships to it. You can't create little insignias. It can't be a million dollar enterprise where you're building a studio. None of that. But if you wanna, if you wanna fan fund something and you're not making any more money beyond what it is to make it, I'll go at it. Let's have a fan film. Lord, do you feel that Discovery is canon to toss and do you have any complaints? Do I feel that Discovery is canon to toss? I don't understand that. I, I, Discovery is canon. It is. It did happen. Um, is it consistent with the original series? There's some consistency, some not. Do I have any complaints? I have a ton of complaints when it comes to Discovery. Uh, but a lot of my issues with it come that it's stuff doesn't make sense. And that it um, it's too agenda based. The original and Voyager and Next Generation were the only good ones. Okay, Ghost World. I think Star Wars ended with that though. I don't think they support bigger fan films anymore. Okay, maybe. I'm saying you're asked what I would do. I mean, unless there was a unless there was a um, reason not to do that, then. Hey, just want to say you were the channel that got me into Trek, so thanks for that. Well, cool. I'm glad the Eternal Chronicle. You know, people really get stuff uh, wrong when it comes. Get people misconstrue. They think that I hate Star Trek, or that I don't think you should watch Star Trek Discovery, or um, or all of this. So let me say this. Now we're going to talk about some things I'm doing with the channel and some some ways I want you guys to help out eventually. Uh, but I'm just a guy with an opinion breaking down science fiction and something I love. I think that uh, stories, I think that uh, movies, I think that all of this can change the world. And so, uh, and I think they can change minds. And I, I, I care about it quite a bit. And so that's why I do what I do. And that's why I get so pissed off at Discovery. Because I think, I think Discovery took something that brought people together and uh, divided them unnecessarily. Do you think there's a connection between Andromeda and Star Trek? I know that's what Roddenberry wanted. Um, and I know his destroying it was kind of a jab. Uh, I don't, I don't, the technologies aren't consistent. So I don't, I don't know. But I think that's what he was going for. My problem with Discovery is every single character, and I like all Star Trek space battles, is all shot too close in a POV to have any sense of tactics. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, battles and fiction. Battle and fiction. Battles and fiction should be set up from the beginning to realistically get the author to the result they wanted, not contrive to that end. I agree, Mammoth. I think Babylon 5 did it well because of how, the, how it was written. I think that's its biggest strength. I think that if it wasn't written as well as it was, it wouldn't be worth anything. Uh, why would they say something was canon and then demand that everything be only 80% consistent, says Virginia. I'm not sure where you're getting the 80% um, marker, but I agree. I think that they would, they would do that uh, to get in the crowd that cares about canon. Ghost World thinks I'm crazy. LOL, good question. I blame it on Deuce Ex Machina. Hey, Lore, would it ever break down some of the worst Trek episodes of all time and make fun of them? Like the early TNG uh, seasons, for example? Uh, I mean, I would break down and use my sarcasm. I don't know that I'd say making fun of them. I mean, people think that I make fun of... If you think I make fun of things, I don't think so. I, I'm just being sarcastic and making jokes about it. Um, I, I want to cover as much of Star Trek as I can. I, I would love that my entire library, my entire archive uh be uh as definitive as it can on star trek you know 
In the 2260s, the Constitution class should be 287 meters long, not 340 meters long. Okay. Fair enough. Star Trek Discovery isn't canon, as the are people on staff to be fact-checking that can't use stuff from the original series. That's... I don't know where that rumor comes from, but that's not true. They can use anything they want. They've admitted as such. Um, they just choose not to. Laura, do you think B5 would be able to succeed in the current climate? Um, I think it would change, and it probably would change similar to what we see in uh, uh, Star Trek. Um, I think that a lot, some of the things that they did, some of the themes that they did, would never pass muster. I don't think we could have Deep Space Nine in this atmosphere. Uh, I don't think that, um, I think people would be very disappointed with a remake of Babylon 5. You know, so here's the thing. The one thing Ghost World and I would agree on is that I don't think that any of the stuff that you see um, in uh, Star Trek, uh, The Next Generation, the original series, Deep Space Nine, Voyager, I don't think that could work in our current culture. I don't think that it would be able to advance for a couple of reasons. Um, I don't think that it's what the Hollywood types or execs would want. Uh, I don't think that it's something that could uh, live in our uh, outrage culture. And so... I, I simply don't think that it could exist the way it is. I do think that they could do something like Axanar. Uh, could exist, but I don't think we'd ever see Deep Space Nine or Babylon 5. Could the Federation ever break into civil war? I've talked about this beforehand, and I'll, I'll say it now, and I stand by this. Uh, the... Um, The only plausible outcome after Deep Space Nine, a decade or two in, after that conflict, is civil war or some insane political uh, maneuvering. Here's why. The Dominion War lasted about three to four years. And in that time, they uh, lost... Uh, this may be an overreach, but they lost a lot of people, like generations, right? So uh, Starfleet was getting so desperate that they were making cadets who weren't ready into ensigns. Uh, they didn't have enough people to fill. They were having a, a, um, a soldier shortage and a, uh, a ship shortage. Entire... Uh, I want to say generations, that may be an overreach, but entire groups of, of Starfleet personnel grew, uh, were trained in this war. They only ever knew Starfleet as a military. And then you have the invasion of Beta Z. You have massive losses. The Dominion got to Vulcan's border. If there is no true canon map, but Vulcan is deep within Federation territory. A good quarter, if not a half, of Federation territory fell to the Dominion. And you have all this loss of life and all of this death. And, and Section 31, a proliferation of Section 31... Uh, where they uh, have power in the top echelons of Starfleet and the Federation, arguably. And then you have two different points of view. You have one side who thinks that they should go back to being a, uh, explorers, the uh, pacifist era, we'll say, TNG era. Uh, and then you have these battle-hardened Starfleet officers and... Beta Z and even Vulcan, or no, not Vulcan, but Beta Z and Earth that had a terrorist attack happen, uh, who would say never again, never again will we allow something like the Dominion to ever threaten Starfleet. And so you have a very high, very pro uh, Starfleet military side and a pacifistic era. 
and I, I civil unrest, uh, if not civil war. I think it is the reasonable outcome of the Dominion War. Now, that's my opinion. You guys may disagree. Uh, but I, I, I don't see it. I'll say this. If the Picard era, the Picard show comes out and they they don't go that route and, you know, it's just happy-go-lucky, everybody became explorers again, or it's just partially uh, militarized, I don't think that that is... It's not going to bug me to the nines, but I don't think it's as realistic, you know? Ghost World, a Federation Civil War would be very metaphoric to the Star Trek fan base. I agree. I tell you, if I wrote, we've discussed this, if I was to write, um, if I was to write it, I would do the Civil War thing. Uh, and you know who I would have against each other? This would be the spark. If I was to write it, it would be an Akira class vessel. That was the hero vessel, by the way. But this would be the spark. Uh, and this is actually within canon, or not within canon, but within reason, because they've wanted to do this with Vulcan for quite a while. I would say I would have two sides. I'd have the two sides I just explained. I would have Vulcan uh, remove itself from the Federation, secede from the Federation. I would then have the Andorians get so irritated that they would um, uh, they would uh, push or challenge Vulcan. And so what happens is Vulcan secedes. Andorian Andoria sends uh, a entire uh, uh, like trade ships. They would send cargo ships. Uh, with Andoria sh uh, warships around it to go to Vulcan and to in, in an attempt to force Vulcan to accept them as a member, to force the treaty, the trade agreement. And so you have uh, you have Andorian cargo ships, you have Andorian warships, and you have the Vulcan warships on the other side who are going to protect their borders. The Akira shows up. All of a sudden, you have uh, a couple of Romulan warbirds also decloak, wanting to defend the autonomy of Vulcan. And now we got a party. So you got Vulcan wanting to secede. You got Andoria challenging Vulcan, saying you can't secede. You can't leave the Union. You got the Romulans wanting to take advantage, because the Romulans have wanted Vulcan since TNG, if not Toss. And so now we got a now we got a party, and I think that if you planned it out ahead of time, you can make a very interesting and intriguing uh, uh, story out of that. How much of a threat are the Romulans after their world is destroyed, and what is the current state of the Empire? Um, apparently, it sent them into disarray. I would say the Romulans, in my opinion, have never been a complete and utter threat. They've always been a paper tiger. Uh, their cloak and their ability to, their spy network is their biggest strength. Uh, with the destruction of Romulus, uh, I'm, I'm, I think they'd fracture, honestly, but I don't know. Uh, Lore, where are the humans in your Starfleet Civil War? I don't understand that. Uh, Jesse one. I'd also like to see... Oh, you mean where do they stand? They'd probably try to broker peace, because that's what humans do. Uh, yes, I actually really like that. First, because we always need more Andorians, criminally underused. I'd love to see the Andorians get more aggressive. Well, the, it's it's a play on multiple levels. Andoria and Vulcan have always been at each other's throat. They've always hated each other. Uh, now, they get together and they're friendly now, but it's not hard for old um, uh, irritations to crop back up, right? So, I mean, it's just an old thing. And then you got uh, Romulans come in trying to bolster. Romulans really couldn't do much, but they could cause a hell of a problem politically for Starfleet. Um, Bob the Builder. Weren't all member militaries fully absorbed by Starfleet? They were Bob the Builder. However, uh, if you look at Starfleet design, there's no way to explain why it's like that, and it's not multiple ships designed like... Uh, the Vulcans are like the Andorians. 
uh, unless you assume that the original military ships stayed as sort of um, uh, like a planetary defense or like a coast guard, which is the only thing that really makes sense to me. Uh, and I think they'd still have those ships. It would just more be like a coast guard type thing. Hey, Laura, on this question here, do you know what Star Trek Enterprise gets so much hate? Why Star Trek Enterprise? I personally like the setting a lot. Don't hate me. Why do people... Guys, I am honestly not that bad of a... I don't know why I get such a uh, bad rap for that. I will I will first... When I answer comments, I, am, I answer them in the perceived tone I get. I get anywhere from 100 to 400 comments a, a day. So I can only comment so much. And I can only spend so much time. So I give what I get. And if I get it wrong, I apologize. And then I'm just straight to the point because I can't respond to everyone. I'm not this, like hate guy that hates everybody um enterprise took a lot of liberties they uh changed i think and did uh, made a lot of missteps in the beginning i think the last couple of seasons really found their footing um but enterprise was trek but it was the furthest away until discovery it's kind of like uh people would say well discover well enterprise really wasn't trek um, and, uh, you can see how far away it is. And Discovery was like, hold my beer, right? Uh, I always considered that if it wasn't for the Federation, I could see the Andorians joining the Klingons. Maybe. They probably have a war with the Andorians losing and being absorbed like the, uh, Orions were. How would the Alpha Quadrant powers react to a Federation Civil War? Is it possible that the entire Alpha Quadrant could go to a state? I don't think the entire Alpha Quadrant could go. I think that a lot of would sit back. I think Cardassia is in no, um, no position to fight. The Klingon Empire would still be licking their wounds, though they would probably side with the Federation. Uh, Romulans would uh, take advantage and try to keep it going. Breen would stay in theirs. I think the Dominion would probably stay out of it, too. Correct me if I'm wrong, but Starfleet is Terran-based, but in cooperation with UFP absorbed members of UFP planets into its ranks. So about a post-DS9 Starfleet coup. Starfleet is not technically Terran-based. The one thing about Discovery uh, is that it is somewhat legitimate in the amount of different alien species. Um, the... Uh, Darth Oculus, I know you're not a hater. Yeah, but I mean, a lot of people think I am. They think I'm just like, I hate every comment. I just don't. I'm straight to the point. And if I think that you're coming at me hostile, I'm going to respond hostile. I got 400 comments and 10% of all comments I get are hate comments. That's 40 comments in a day uh, that are just going at me. But anyway, um, I lost where I was going. I, I don't... Starfleet is not only human-based. It's just we only see human ships because uh, it costs less to do humans. Though there is evidence to believe that Starfleet would commonly group... Uh, group... Um, civil, group uh, species together. We know they have Vulcan-only ships. We know they have uh, human-only ships. But it is every every planet, in theory, uh, gives to the military. What would you think of a generation show featuring the son of a traitor whose ship was destroyed and is later discovered to be a hero, but the captain still has the stigmas of his father's name? Uh, maybe? Daniel's Hot Topic. Laura, have you seen E.C. Hendry's new vid called Star Trek's, uh, Star Trek's Pessimistic Future? I haven't. I wonder if he based it off of my video talking about it internet people are jerks some of us like to have friendly arguments with you yeah i mean i i don't mind arguing or disagreeing or whatever again if it looks like you're hostile and i'm hostile in response and you point out yo why are you being a jerk i meant it in this way i'll apologize um i don't mind having the um discussion though i am off time for dinner talk to you later table top Yu-Gi-Oh. By the way, if you guys are watching this, don't forget to hit that like button. Uh, I'm not going to be on for much longer. I want to. I kind of want to throw something to you guys too, just to let you know. And I already told people if you're part of my Patreon, then you already know about this. But I'm going to throw this out too, uh, and you're going to see an actual video come out uh, in about two to three weeks. But 
you know, thanks to you guys, thanks to the popularity of the channel, thanks to, um, uh, you know, Super Chats, Patreon, all that, I'm finally back on my feet and I'm in a position to do what I've wanted to do. And so, I know you're joking, Nikta. Um, and so I'm, I'm excited to say that I'm about to expand this channel like it's never been expanded before. Now, nothing's going to go away. So I'm still going to do the, the lore, the breakdown. I'm keeping everything. I'm not changing. Uh, uh, but I'm going to be adding some stuff to it. I actually now have a, a sound room, so my audio is going to be off the charts good. Uh, I just need to finish it up. And I'm going to have a studio. And I'm actually going to... Um, add some more to what I'm doing. Um, and I'm looking at how I'm gonna do it, but thinking back to uh, kind of like a nostalgia critic or a um, like Dr. Downvote or Ask the Devil, I'm really excited about it and I think we can take it to the next level. Um, and I, I used to do stuff like that before in a character called The Gaming Heretic where I would, I would do skits and stuff and still talk about it. And so it would be, uh, it would be like it have its own cinematic universe. I'm, I'm just excited. I think it'll be interesting. Uh, and doing this will actually allow me to do more in-depth breakdowns like what you're seeing, uh, as well as the shorter ones. And it's not going to impact what I'm already doing. So stay on the, the lookout for that. Uh, there's going to be a tie-in with Patreon and stuff. Uh, I'm finally in a position where I can give out shirts or free swag or give you guys discounts. I'm, I'm really... Um, I'm really hyped. I really think it's going to be awesome. But yeah, I could see the Maquis colonies using a Starfleet Civil War for actual independence and from their own nation. Sure. I'm very happy to know your channel is about to improve and grow. Well, good. Yeah, I, I, I'm looking forward to giving you guys the pitch and showing you where it's going. Um, it's, it's really cool. Again, I used to do... I used to do video game reviews, and I played a character called the Gaming Heretic, and basically, again, it was like Nostalgia Critic, but, uh, you know, its own cinematic universe. So I'm going to do that with the Lore Master concept, and you'll see, I'll keep everything I'm doing right now, but then you'll see complete breakdowns and, like, reviews of the Star Trek movies. You'll see, um, uh, you know, 20 to 30 minute breakdowns of uh the battles and a complete new starfleet dominion war series and i'm really uh excited about that do i watch uh letter red letter media i watch them all the time i love um i love their uh oh what's his name the guy who's the most horrible person on the place the face of the planet but knows movies talks about his son i love that character half in the bag i can i it doesn't bug me one way or the other oh and, um uh, Red Letter Media, there where when they mock critics, oh my God, I want to have their uh, I want to have their babies when they do that. Have I thought about doing movie commentaries? I would love to do that, but I don't like the where you have to play it in the background. I might, I don't know. But yeah, so it'll be a lot of fun. Again, um, let me see, let me see if I can show you guys. I did see some of their videos on Discovery. Uh, some of the stuff is going to be insanely old, but let me see if you guys are interested. I'll try to show you real quick, and then we can have a, some of the funny fun and be on our marries, good gents. Be on our marries. Where is it? Where is it? God, I love that I suck it finding stuff all right and i can't say things i suck at, at finding stuff and, and i can't say things it's just sad really it's so very very sad and i don't know that i'll be able to do this for you guys but let me take a look real quick and while i'm doing that i'll look here i'd like lord to see a do a gundam seed review i'll i'll watch it a lot of people have asked that i don't know i tell you what press one in the comment section if you would like to see me do such a review of Gundam Seed. Uh, I, I honestly, I'm not completely convinced how I feel on that, though. <sighs> Let me see. I'm trying to find a really good one that you guys would appreciate. That could be quite a bit of fun, but it has to be the right one. It has to be the perfect. It can't just be any. 
has to be the exact right one. I know what I'm looking for, in fact, but uh, I don't think that I'm going to be able to find it. And then y'all are going to leave, and it's going to be horrible, and everybody, everybody hates it. Uh, and then, you know, I'm not going to be able to prove my, my own self-worth, and that'll just make me very, very sad. Um, and I don't know what I'm going to do with life. I guess I'm just going to have to end it all, you know? There's nothing right there. Here we go. Here it is. Let me see if I can watch. Yup. All right. So this isn't the best. I'm going to go ahead and admit that one straight out. But I think you guys might enjoy it. Not a lot of people let me do Gundam scene. It's called Organization Lord. Yeah, you would think that. Uh, you would think that I could do that. Oh, and yeah, the dude. I got uh, Jamie Bamber did uh, did this. I, it was hilarious. Hilarious. All right. Here we go. Hi there, I'm Jamie Bamber from Battlestar Galactica, and you're watching Heretic Gamer, though um, I'm really not sure why. Ever to get this thing right. I've had to disassemble the TARDIS like six times, but finally I have a, a cloning machine. So let's let's go ahead and try this out. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, that is cool. Oh, I am going to rule heaven and earth. This is going to be the most awesome day ever. Oh! Oh, hey, what did you want? Oh my god, that is like horrific. So bad. Yeah, I mean audio and stuff will obviously be fixed and look better. Could you guys hear? It? Yeah. Oh my god. Just absolutely horrific. But it'll be like that, but actually good, not the horrific audio and uh stupid ass stuff like that. Um Oh my god, it's so bad. Anyway. Yeah, so I'm going to take that to the next level. I'm going to have a studio. Uh, it probably won't be The Gaming Heretic, so it's not going to be like from hell or anything. I don't know the background to um, the uh, the lore master. I am, I am going to, uh, you know, this is going to happen, and this is going to work. Darth Nictus is cringe. It's going to be a lot better than that. Uh, but the... It's happening, but I am going to, you know, if you guys want to help me make it better and make it go faster, then uh, imagine that, but good, is all I'm saying. I'm excited about it. I didn't know what I was doing back then. Now I'm actually taking classes and have all kinds of upgraded equipment, uh, sound equipment, new uh, recording stuff. Uh, I'm really... Uh, I'm really, it's, it's going to be off the chain. Just trust me. If you could, if, if, if you see that and you liked it or you see the potential in it, I promise you 10 times, all kinds of effects. Uh, before you go, I got to ask what's your opinion of the Q? Um, I like, I like, I don't like Voyager Q. Uh, DS9 Q, I didn't like all that much either. Uh, Q, when he was kind of not the cad, not silly, but looking out for humanity and kind of, he comes off as a trickster, but in the background is more try more has humanity's back. I like him in that, uh, but some of his iterations kind of like the Borg. I'm not a huge fan of. Anyway, guys, that's how, where we're gonna end there. Uh, you know, again, I want you if you like that or you see the potential in that, then there's gonna be some chances for you guys to help me. 
And uh, regardless, nothing changes. And if you don't want to help, that's fine. Everything's going to stay free. You're still going to get everything you do. Uh, as always, guys, just remember, in the end, we're all stories. Here's a good one. Coming back real quick because Darth Oculus gave $2. Thank you so much. Hey, I'm glad you could discover B5. Stay with the channel. There's going to be a lot more for you to discover.